Good morning. Welcome to Expert Insights. I am your host, Raju Man. Here on Head of Expert Insights, we take external views of internal successes by foreigners, expats, and immigrants who have made Philippines their home and are doing good in the Philippines, either in business or society. This morning, this Friday morning, just before Valentine's, we have a very special guest, and he's doing some fun things in the Philippines. Number one, he's bringing in tourists, and the other thing that he is doing is something that I'd like to know from him. His name is Mark Wolbank, and he is the founder, president, or chairman of Endemic Peace. Endemic Pursuit. Endemic Pursuit. He's British, and he'll tell us what is this other thing that you do. Mr. Wolbank, welcome to Expat Insights. Thank you, Roger. So tell us a bit about uh, the subject matter of today. Well, um, I'm here because I'm a bird watcher. All right. <laughs> and uh, the Philippines is an amazing place for that. Right. Mainly because it has uh, more than 200 species of endemic birds. That's mm -hmm. birds that are only found here and nowhere else in the world. 200 species. Yeah. Okay. It has many more than 200 species in the Philippines. In fact, there's 640 at the last count, I believe, that, uh, that have been seen here. But more than 200 that are only found here. Oh, else in the world. or unique to the Philippines, like the tarsier. That's right. But that's not a bird. No. So, uh, wait, other countries, a hundred and uh, so many countries across the world, how many species does each of these countries have? Well, it varies enormously. My own country, where I come from, yeah. has about 300 species, right. but effectively no endemic species at all. In other words, all the birds found in the UK are found elsewhere in the world. Oh, oh, how about well, Brazil and Chile well, and uh, Brazil South has Africa? Brazil has the highest number of species of birds okay, in the world. Okay. But um, uh, the Philippines has more endemicity. In other words, the number of species exclusively to this country is the highest. Would, would that be because we are an archipelago and Absolutely. 7,000? Absolutely. So they can't fly far away because well, they have they've evolved. Time. They've evolved over, over thousands and thousands of years. And so some species are here because they may have died out in the rest of the world. Other species may have evolved completely oh, separately. Like crossbred. Yeah. Eagle and crow become well, crow. Well, um, uh, not so much that. Um, they, um, they evolve as their own species. So oh. over time, the Darwinian oh. theory, they oh. will change to adapt to the habitat. Are there any visible proof? Is there any visible proof of a bird evolving on its own from one shape and one creature to another? Absolutely. I mean, uh, birds have different shaped beaks or bills to uh, enable them to eat the food that they um, that they require. Mm -hmm. So you get some very strange shaped bills. You know, um, uh, there's ah. a spoon bill that wow. uh, occurs a spoon here bill. Um, that uh, has a bill shaped like a spoon and it's used for filtering out uh, microorganisms from the water. What bird might that be? What is the name of that bird? Spoonbill. It's called spoon a spoonbill. Uh, spoon yeah, bill that's, bird. that's its name. Very often <laughs> birds are called by what they look like. So. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So uh, now this little club or association that you represent or this group of people, bird watchers. Well, I'm a member of the Wild Bird Club of the Philippines, which is a fantastic organization here. Um, uh, that was founded to enable people to uh, both see the birds of the Philippines and also con to contribute to actually looking after them and trying to make sure that the environment is, is maintained. And it was founded only in the Philippines? It's a global organization? No, it was founded in the Philippines. It's mm -hmm. run by Filipinos for Filipinos, but expats are welcome. And I'm one. And, and how many members are there to Has this club? Uh, almost 300 members now, and we celebrate our 10th anniversary this year. And what do you do on, uh, in the club and on the 10th anniversary? Well, there's going to be obviously parties for the 10th anniversary. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not privy to what those are yet, but yeah. I'm sure it will be, will be great fun. And uh, it's just a really good way to meet other Filipinos. And, uh, I've never heard of the bird club or the subject matter of bird watching. I mean, it never struck me that I should go and watch birds. Well, if I can give you an idea as to how popular it is. Okay, in, my please, own, yeah. in my own country, the UK, there are two million members of the equivalent And club. how many people are there in the UK? Well, 76 million. But and uh, two still million of them are bird watchers? Two million of them are bird watchers and <laughs> are members of the bird club. I'm, I'm just visualizing it all Englishmen getting on their horses and going and watching birds. In America, yeah. it's eight million. 
but obviously Out of there are many. 350 million, yes. five percent of um, the population. So uh, the, we're talking very large numbers, also in other countries around the world, and all of these people want to come to the Philippines to see what well, most of them want no to come kidding. to the no Philippines kidding. to see these birds that are only found here. So it's fantastic. I swear I didn't know this, that there are so many people around the world doing this thing. So it's a big, big tourism business, potentially. Yeah, yeah. But what happens? I mean, how, how does one get started into bird watching? And what do you do when you watch a bird? I mean, well, what is the process? That's a very good question. I started when I was... Good question, hopefully. Of course. Um, but um, when I was young, I started. But it's important to say that uh, you don't need to be young to um, take up bird watching. <laughs> okay. I uh, have a very good friend, uh, a Frenchman, who is an expat here, has lived here for many years. And he is not young? Um, well or is he young? He looks young. Okay. Uh, seeing as we're on the television, I'm not going to say. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. But um, uh, Christian Perez, and he retired from... That's the name of Frenchman, yeah. it's Mr. Perez? Yeah, interesting. Okay. But he's lived here, as I say, for 30-odd okay. years. Okay. He retired from ABBs. Yes. He took up bird watching and is now one of the experts on birds of the Philippines. So, so you just, uh, just get up and go and say, I'm going to go watch birds. You have to learn how to watch them. You no have to learn what you're looking at. And for that, you need a book, um, uh, a bird guide. Yeah. Uh, and the best one that's available at the moment is something called the Kennedy Guide to the Birds of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, and a pair of binoculars. How easy is that? Okay, I, I need to know more about how to get started, you know. So no certification, get a book, get a pair of binoculars and a hat. Join the club. And join, the and join, join the World Bird Club of the Philippines. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't, don't get me there yet. <laughs> I want to show my viewers the couple of clips that you brought. Okay. And uh, w one of them is uh, kind of substantiating the fact that Philippines is the place to go for watching birds. So let's watch the video that Mark has brought and Mark will explain the video as it is shown. So let's cue that one. There you go, bird watching in the Philippines. We can talk about this, Mark. So, uh, yeah. so what's ROX? Is that the local organization? Oh, that's the sports that's club. That's, that's, a that, that's, um, that's a supplier of outdoor equipment that uh, okay. helps sponsor this particular video. Mm -hmm. So by endemic, you mean that means only good to the yeah, Philippines? Yeah, this, this is a good one to start with because it's the Philippine duck. It's an endemic duck. The Philippine duck, as it sounds, is only found here in the Philippines. But right. if you want to see this duck, you must come to this country. And it's very much a success story that I think the club has had something to do with. Wait, when you say you, if you want to see this duck, so that means there are people who want to specialize in duck watching? Oh, there are. There are people oh, that just want to see a particular type of, type of bird. But um, just in general terms, this is a bird you can only see here. The same that's the eagle? Philippine with the eagle? Philippine eagle, yes. Yeah, yeah, sure, um, yeah. That's the Philippines national bird. Now, that is critically endangered yeah. due to habitat loss. Yeah. Uh, but it's a spectacular bird, the largest eagle in the world, and the only, only eagle with blue eyes, which no. I find amazing. No, yeah. and did they should not even Irish. <laughs> 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 no, wait a minute. So uh, you said that they have evolved and they have adapted to their terrain. So why did the Filipino eagle become biggest in the world? Because this is a because bunch of, of the small prey. Animals. Because of the prey, it goes for it. It's also known as monkey-eating eagle, and will eat. Um, you know, growing monkeys. No, so it became big because yep. of the kind because of, uh, of the kind of prey it diet needs, uh, it had. Yep, monkeys. Absolutely. absolutely. So how many uh, thousands of years did it take for it to become the biggest eagle in the world? Um, I wish we could I hold that. I'm sure, many, many, many thousands of years. That last bird we just saw was the Philippine falconhead. This one we're looking falconhead, at. Falconhead. Yeah. Falconhead, which is uh, the smallest falcon in the world. So you go from the biggest eagle of a smallest falcon in one country. Falcon. Yep. Falcon, yeah. Yep. Now that's so small, it doesn't eat other birds. That eats flying insects. So that's the falcon, the one that really flies well. That's, that's the tiniest of them all. That's the tiniest of that particular. Uh, uh, particular by the way, I'm getting excited watching pictures of birds. Yeah, so well now good. I know what join, you mean by bird join, watching. Join the World Bird Club and come and watch with us. This one? This one is a pigeon? That one's I the last? Oh, you missed I it. I missed that one. Okay, okay. Great, so uh, let's go back, buy a book. Buy a hat, buy a pair of binoculars, and just go with you. The hat's an optional extra, but yes, oh, basically. For the sun, for the sun, and, sun and block. Yeah, yeah if, you, if, you, if you feel you need a hat, by all means have a hat. But the important thing, you need a, need a pair of binoculars, yeah. like these here. Yeah. Um, 
and you need a book so that you can find out what it is you're actually looking at. But I would say the most important thing is join the Wild Bird Club of the Philippines because then you get other people to help you with that. And right. also someone to go for a beer with after you've seen a fantastic bird. In the process of bird watching, what do you do? You just sit down, you hide behind the bushes? There's uh, many different ways. You, you might be on a boat okay. to see the birds. You might be going for a walk through the forest. You might be sat on a beach. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a very sociable. Look, bird washing is fun and exciting. It's fun because you get to, it's a, it's a hobby you get to do with your friends. And family uh, and too. Yeah, and family. Yeah, Many imagine. families go together. Yeah. Uh, you get to meet other people that are interested as well. Uh, and it's exciting because every single time you go bird watching, it's, well, I, I sort of feel it's like Christmas because oh. um, you don't know what you're going to see. It's, uh, it's, it's like the present that you unwrap. No and kidding. You are so excited about this. It's fantastic. Yeah, it yeah. really is fantastic, and it's, it's so easy. It's something anybody can do, any age. Has anybody ever wondered what the birds might have to say about this? I'm sure they love it. The birds will oh, have to I'm be sure they love it. So yeah, what's the course. best place to go within the Metro Manila area? Well, there are two places that can easily be done in a day that are both fantastic. Mm -hmm. One is Makiling, which is for forest just birds just by, the of by, Los yeah, by, by Los Banos. On the university campus there, yeah. uh, University of the Philippines campus, Los Banos, there's a trail that starts at what they call the Trees Hostel that goes well, up. I didn't go up the trail. There are a couple of spots there. There is that place where it's, called, it's like it's a volcanic uh, kind yeah, of place. Yeah, Mud Springs. Mud Springs, Springs mud yeah, Springs, yeah. Mud Springs. That's the place to watch yeah, birds? Yeah, you can absolutely. You see forest birds there. Right. Yeah. And the other place which is absolutely fantastic is Candaba to the north of... Uh, Same mountain? No, no, no. Oh. Candaba to the north of Manila, up yeah. uh, uh, Enlex. Right. Uh, you come off at uh, Kulilan and uh, you go, it's signposted. They've actually, the government have actually put, uh, put signposts wow. to wow. Candaba Marsh. Wow. And there you see a full range of marshland and water birds, including wow. the Philippine duck, wow. which we've wow. just seen. So, uh, are there any uh, measurable, tangible, material benefits to this besides the fact that you and I just got excited looking at pictures of birds? Is there something else that can be gained from this for the country, for the bird watchers, or for the birds themselves? Well, there are um, a number of tour companies that specialize in okay. uh, bringing people, the, the bird watchers from these other countries that I've mentioned, all over the world, and they come in large numbers to the Philippines. Uh, uh, from uh, across the world? From all uh, over the world. The 8 million Americans, the 6 they million don't all come at uh, once. Brits, etc. Wow. But uh, um, this is something that's been going on for a number of years. It was started by, uh, by a Brit who's unfortunately no, no longer with us. He died a couple of years ago. He moved on to bird heaven. Absolutely. Tim Fisher. And he started the it. The name of Tim Fisher? Tim. Not Tim oh, Fisher. Tim. Fisher. Tim. Tim. Okay. But I nearly. <laughs> and uh, now the two largest companies for people coming over here uh, are run by a guy called Mickey Carangal, who is a Filipino, and Rob Hutchinson, who is an expat who What's lives here. second name? Rob yeah. Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. And they run the largest uh, uh, bird tour, uh, tourism, thing. tourism things here. Right, right. I, um, I have a, a business called Endemic Pursuit Tours. Which we mentioned, yeah, Endemic um, Pursuit. Sorry, it's endemic tours, but you mean endemic pursuit. In endemic pursuit tours. And, uh, but I specialize in a particular type of bird watching, uh, maybe uh, for academic purposes. Last year, I uh, led a group from the Smithsonian to southern Mindanao. Wow. Um, uh, which was a great honor. What is this special kind of bird? Well, they weren't looking for a particular bird. They wanted to study birds that occurred in coffee plantations in the Philippines with a view to uh, certificating uh, the, uh, the, the coffee coming from them as coffee being coming from, from the these plantations, plantations as being bird friendly, what ecologically is the friendly. What is the connection? I mean, what is the, I mean, what, what do you get out of it? What kind well, of the whole world gets something from it because if you are planting coffee in an environmentally friendly way and the idea is to promote uh, coffee growing under the canopy of forest, yes, yeah, so or under the tree canopy, it's good for the land, it's good for the country, it's good for the planet. Oh, oh, so 
then it's good so for it's the not birds. It's planned agriculture, but natural agriculture. Well, it's and planned the within nature. It's, 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 it's planning agriculture to be sympathetic to nature. So go back to the story. Smithsonian Institute. Uh, they asked me to lead a team of right. experts. Mm -hmm. So these people were clearly experts on birds. And that spe uh, specific kind of a bird? Well, no, all birds, but what they're interested in seeing is what birds are occurring the in, coffee in, in, in those coffee areas mm -hmm. and what can be done to promote that. Mm -hmm. um, and they're writing, uh, they're writing papers on it. And where did this happen? Southern Mindanao. This, wa this was in coffee plantations in Sultan Kibarat in South Cotabato. Wow. Did you go there? Yeah, absolutely. And how long were you there? About two weeks. Wow. How, how exciting was it? How many people well, were there? Well, very. Um, you're told that parts of the Philippines are not safe. And yeah. I think that's probably uh, people being, if you like, overly sensitive and overly cautious. Right. We found nothing but welcome down there. Wow. People asked us what we were doing there, yeah. but in a nice way, uh, as in, uh, we don't see many foreigners here, <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's great to see you. <laughs> That's sad, isn't it? It's kind of well sad. Well, yeah, but yeah. I, I, I maintain that all of the main islands of the Philippines are, are safe. Okay, and Sultan Kudarat was safe for you and Absolutely. for how many people were there? Fantastic. Uh, Mark, you have one more little clip for us. Uh, you want to show us one yes, more sure. clip, no? Yep. So uh, I'll, I'll have it queued in, then you tell me what it is. Okay. Yeah? Okay. So should we? Uh, let's put on that other clip, the one with. This is what? We, what this is what place, Mark? Oh, this is the Philippines. This is just. Uh, I know, um, what place uh, in the Philippines? That, that I think is Hundred Islands. That, okay. That first, uh, that first shot. Um, but this is just showing what a wonderful, this wonderful is Sagada. country. Is that Sagada? Uh, no, that's uh, the underground river at. Uh, 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 Sabang. Oh, there you go, rice terraces. Oh, in, uh, uh, these are the rice terraces in uh, Banawi. Yeah. Um, it's just the most beautiful country, and if you can combine touring and visiting, look, that's the uh, that was the uh, whale shark and, uh, that you get down at Donsol. There was Nemo. I just and Nemo. Saw you can Nemo. see lots of Nemos. In <laughs> But yeah. look, how gorgeous is that? What a wonderful yeah. country to come. I'm very, very honoured to live here. Wow, those are bats. And that is the mountain lizard. Mountain lizard. Yes. Right. And this, what was that? Animal? That was a Palawan bear cat. Oh, yeah, there's a one that's kind of rare, isn't it? Uh, well, it's, uh, yeah, the fairly rare now. Right. And that was a tarsier just a few seconds ago. And this, this these videos are made by the bird club or made by... This was, this was done by the Department of Tourism uh, and, uh, uh, and the bird club, yes. It's uh, um, really just to... Um, show, um, you know, how wonderful the Philippines is. And oh, sorry, uh, there's a little bit of bad news out there. Philippine Eagle. Yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, it's, it's to raise people's awareness of, of, uh, of the environment in the Philippines and, uh, um, you know, what a great country it is. Fantastic. I, I'm glad you love it. I'm glad you're doing this. So, uh, invite me someday if you're going Absolutely. in the neighborhood to somewhere Absolutely. and my people here. You know. But I also understand that this subject matter of bird watching also has a language of its own. Well, would you mean you wanna, twitchers you and this sort of thing. Sorry? Twitchers. Everyone seems to have heard of something called twitchers. And uh, twitchers is? A special kind of bird watcher. A twitcher oh, is somebody... So you are a twitcher? No, I'm not. It's uh, a, a twitcher is somebody who gets to hear about a rare bird that's somewhere in particular <laughs> and, and then will rush yeah. hundreds of miles you to go and see the... Around. You go, that's where oh it comes God, from. Oh my God, I want to watch right. the bird. And oh, uh, my, friend, my friend Christian, who I mentioned earlier. Christian Perez, yeah. Yeah, he is, he's a twitcher. And, uh, and twitcher is spelled T-W-I-T-C-H-E-R? Correct. So every time you say, oh, by the way, I saw a yellow uh, finned uh, robin, yeah. red-necked yeah. robin, and he goes, oh my God, I want to go. If, if he hasn't seen it before, he certainly would, yes. Oh, my God. But then, there are, then there are listers as well. Listers are people who are interested in uh, uh, listing the number. Making an inventory of That's the right, of different species. And there are other people who are just interested in particular types of bird, like we mentioned earlier, maybe ducks, maybe kingfishers, right. or whatever. Well, and I, I'd go for eagles any time. Wow, yes, yeah. they're great. Yeah, so how many eagles are there? How many species of eagles are there besides the Filipino oh, eagle? Oh, you've taught me on the whole. I, I you are I an eagle twitcher? I, I, I an eagle lover. Birds of prey in the Philippines, there are probably about 20 different species of birds of prey, including eagles. Those are 
uh, th those are birds that eat other birds. So uh, eagle, uh, falcon, eagles, falcons. Vulture? Buzzards. There's no no vultures in the Philippines. No vultures in the Philippines. No. I'm glad. You know, I'm still happy. Aren't you happy that there are no vultures in the Philippines? But it's also amazing what you can see just around Manila. I mm. mean, the fastest animal on earth is in Manila. Which is that? It's the peregrine falcon. It, it flies. Say that again. The peregrine falcon. It's a large falcon, and there are quite a few in Manila itself. Metro Manila. Yeah. What Metro did they Manila. look like? Well, spectacular. They are, they're, they're well, a, para, fin, vulcan. Per, peregrine. Para, per, peregrine falcon. Okay. And it flies at up to 200 miles an hour. And it eats pigeons. It's its speciality. And, and it's bigger than a pigeon, smaller than a pigeon? Oh, much bigger than a pigeon. Twice the size. Three, the three, fastest three bird in the world. The fastest creature in the world. Fastest creature in the world, yes. not a bird. There's nothing faster on the planet. And it occurs in Manila. And there's one... Uh, well, there's, there's one or two actually roost on well, my what building. What's the bird that goes beep beep? You know the really road runner. Uh, so road runner is not as fast as. No 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 no. Uh, no. no. Nice try though. Okay. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. That's the only bird I know. <laughs> beep beep. <laughs> right. Fantastic. And where do I catch this uh, para green fal uh, falcon? Well, they 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 think that the tall skyscrapers in Makati and Manila are like cliffs to them. So they oh. think they're on a cliff, and it gives them the height for them to dive down and uh, wow, have I dinner. Wow, I get a picture uh, of that bird. Well, I did bring one. But oh, you so did? I oh, did you, have one. you know what? We'll maybe clip you it in during maybe the... Maybe you could clip that in. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll squeeze it in after the, this thing. All right, fantastic. So thank you very much for telling us uh, so much about birds and bird watching and about... Um, Philippines being the haven for bird watchers. Is there something that you want to add to all this wonderful information that you shared with us? Yeah, if you're interested in anything that I've said, please join the Wild Bird Club of the Philippines. You can find their uh, uh, email address on their website. So contact the Wild Bird Club of the Philippines. We'd love to have you as a member. Thank you, Roger. And your website? My web website is Endemic Pursuit Tours. You can contact me through that. All right, Mr. Mark Wallbank, thank you so much for telling us so much about birds. I realize that these 20, 25 minutes were short. Fantastic. We thank should you. have brought in the pictures and we should have discussed a little bit more on uh, specificity of the passion that you have. Anyway, so some other time, I hope you'll come back and bring real pictures and share Great. the whole story of bird watching. So gracias. Thank you for And good me. luck with what you're doing in the Philippines and I'm so happy that you love it and I'm so ha also happy that you brought to my mind that we have the fastest creature on earth in the Philippines. Thank you. So that was Mr. Mark Wallbank, and I hope you didn't start twitching listening to his story. Uh, so if you want to become a bird watcher, contact him. His company is Endemic Pursuit Tours. Tours. And I have no website, but you'll be able to find him on our Facebook or his Facebook. So stay watching. Right after the break, we'll come back, and we have another gentleman who is part a little bit Filipino, but a lot of Filipino in some ways. And he'll talk about loving children in the Philippines. Stay watching. This is Expat Insights. I'm your host, Roger Mantin. We'll be right back.